Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Duke Oishi. In our show this week, we'll check in with some of the energy heroes involved in the Clean Energy Initiative. We'll get their views on how the initiative is doing and what's likely to happen next. The Clean Energy Initiative was rolled out in the year 2008 and is going into its fifth year. Certain technologies have emerged and certain leaders have emerged too. It's important that we not only follow the technologies, but also the people involved in moving the Clean Energy Initiative forward. ThinkTech treats these people as energy heroes. We want to profile them for you so you know who they are and how they think, how the initiative is doing, and how it is likely to evolve in the future. Tonight we'll meet five of them. Mina Morita, Robbie Om, Mike Yamane, Jeff Ono, and Jeff Kissel. They come from both the public and private sectors, and they're all intimately involved in the development of clean energy. Mina Morita is chair of the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission, the government body that regulates energy in our state. She was a legislator and chair of the House Energy Committee before, and has been dealing with clean energy development for years. Right now, even under the best scenario, um, 20, 30, 60 percent of our electricity is still projected to come from fossil fuels. And so we have to deal with um, the fossil fuel component. And um, the legislature passed and the governor signed into law um, a policy statement that basically says that the PUC shall consider a diverse fossil fuel portfolio. What you have is the PUC taking a very pragmatic role that, that it's not renewable energy at all costs or any cost. It, it's, it has to be reasonably priced. Cost and affordability are important components in moving forward. Um, you know, oil prices has skyrocketed. Um, you're still dealing with um, emerging uh, renewable sector that, that's not all that cheap. And so, you know, the electricity customer is getting hit. This is an area that hits every single family in the pocketbook. You know, um, your, your household budget, um, if you're a business, um, you know, you get it on the electricity side, you get it on the gasoline side, you get it in your water bill. Your water bill is rising because of the cost of electricity. Um, used to pump your water. Um, so it's something that we have to deal with head on. Um, if we want to become sustainable, um, we have to sort of disengage ourselves from the global market. And the best way to do that is through our indigenous resources, um, many of which are renewable. You know, I think I look back um, when I started on this what, 14 years ago, and you look at how far we've come, where, you know, we're talking about some systems that have over 40% renewable on a circuit, or, you know, 90% renewable on a circuit. And, and, you know, the challenge is, you know, how do you keep maintain system reliability? I mean, we've got the awareness up, we, we are changing the system. We have challenges of bringing the cost down and making it affordable for everybody so everybody throughout the state can benefit from um, you know, this transformation. Robbie Om is Executive Vice President of Hawaiian Electric Company, the utility company that provides electrical power to Oahu and all the islands east of Oahu. He is a visionary and a central figure in the Clean Energy Initiative. The political leadership of the state has pretty much stayed clean energy throughout. Regardless of which party you're talking about, which candidate you're talking about, which awful office level you've had, we really have had remarkably little pushback or game playing over this. It has not been at that level that you've seen most of this challenge. I do think that this long period of high oil prices is straining that. So I would love to see the, the leadership recommit themselves to this. That as painful as it is, 
we have to stay the course. And this is the time we'll be measured on afterwards. When we had the difficult time of high bills and we still had to turn to our people and say, but you got to invest some more. I'm sorry. You got to invest some more. In the next three to five years, you got to put more money on the table. That we had the courage to talk to people about that. We had the courage to stand up for it and, and we did it. Because if we do that, if we spend the next five or so years continuing on the investment track, 10 years out, 15 years out, 20 years out, we're going to look back and say, that was really what defined us. That was the period where our community showed the leadership. And I don't think it's like about to teeter, but it is under greater threat right now. It is under greater threat than it has been at any time. And I, and I, I really think it comes down to that $130 barrel. Well, it comes down to over a year of high prices and people's discomfiture with that. And then it's damn utility, you know, damn solar providers, whatever. I mean, you can find the enemies. That stupid wind farm on my island. I mean, you can find the enemy. And then you can coalesce around that and get unhappy. Uh, but our leaders can pull us out of that. Our leaders can remind us that this was part of a transition of our state to be fundamentally a different place. And that we're actually well on the road. You know, it's the, the one I always joke about is the thing where we try to open the pickle jar as a family. You know, and we push and push and you hand it to someone and they go pop. You're right. And the question is, do they get all the credit for that? You know, and, and the reality is we're, we're right now pushing on that jar. You know, and we haven't heard the popping sound yet. You know, but you're not going to get that pop unless you're doing what we do today. You know, at some point, and I think it's three or four or five years out, we're going we're to feel that pop. We're going to see the numbers just jump up. We're going to realize that we've taken ourselves off of that. That, that, that. that path we were down, caught on oil, we've managed to change. But the question is right now, can we, can we stay? Mike Yamani is the Chief of Operations of KIUC, the Kauai Island Utility Cooperative that provides electrical power to the island of Kauai. He is also a clean energy hero, deeply committed to building clean energy on the island of Kauai. Uh, well, right now, the three technologies that, you know, it's proven technologies. One is, of course, hydro. A lot of potential, a lot of resources, very sensitive, culturally, environmentally, from an ag standpoint. Uh, and, of course, in order for us to do this, uh, we need everybody's support. It's not KC that's going to forge ahead and do hydros. Everybody's got to come to the table. Everybody needs to feel like they're going to win from this or it's, it's just not going to happen. That's a big part of the 50%. PVs were well on our way. We should have about 25 megawatts of PVs on Kauai itself by in the next year or so. Um, big project, uh, largest in the state. Uh, um, and we also have energy storage to help mitigate the PV side. We're also looking at biomass, which is a, a firm energy. It's going to be a capacity contract. We're going to have that when we need it. Uh, so between those three, uh, you know, also kind of looking at biofuels, of course, if that becomes available at a rate that we think it's uh, competitive with what we can do from our renewable generation, that's something we'll look at. You know, we'll look at, basically, it's kind of easy. It's, if it's to our members' benefit, we want to try it. If there's a high risk, and our members are uncomfortable for it from a board's perspective, we're not going to do it. So uh, we're planning to do a 12 megawatt in Anahola and potentially another 12 megawatt on the South Shore. That's in the works. There's also purchase power agreements we have. That's the ANB 6 megawatt. That's being constructed right now. If you go down to Port Island, you'll see the over 4 megawatts of panels in. We also have a 1 megawatt array that's um, being sold to the grid down in Kapa. So, you know, we're, we're looking at a lot of storage. We also have one battery energy storage, and we're going to have two more for the A and B plants and four more for Anahola. So, we're, you know, that battery storage comes in very important to play as far as handling the variable intermittency of solar. But it also supports the grid from just an electrical standpoint. So as far as Kauai is concerned, you know, we're very sensitive to making sure whatever we integrate onto the grid, we, we're still not forgetting our core business um, and which as a utility and as an obligation to the members. Um, obviously, the state has a lot, a big stake in it. Um, ultimately, if there's an outage, it's the electric company get called, uh, not the state. So that's why we're very sensitive on pushing ahead as far as new technology. Proven technology, it's okay. You know, being innovative, we're, you know, we have smart grid. We have over 13,000 meters installed already. Hopefully, we had that done by the sec first quarter of next year. I think we're going to be the only island in the state that's going to be entire smart meters. 
So we are transforming our grid. Energy storage, we're owning the energy storage. We're not having the developers. We want to control that. We're not relying on developers. So and as far as KIC is concerned, we are transforming our grid. Jeff Ono is our consumer advocate. He represents Hawaii's consumers and proceedings before the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission. As you'll see, he's a thoughtful advocate for clean energy and the interests of the public. Yes, costs are, are, are rising. The Consumer Advocates Office is concerned about it. Uh, but in our desire to move toward renewable energy, sometimes we're going to have to uh, look at some of these costs and say, and weigh them against the, the, the benefits. And there are greater benefits to be had because we can get off of get off of petroleum, move toward renewable energy, uh, create jobs in, in this economy, in this poor economy. Uh, and for example, and we had talked about this earlier, Aina Kuapono, uh, it would have meant uh, bill increases for Oahu and Helco Big Island residents. And it was that for that reason the Public Utilities Commission said no to that, that particular contract. The consumer advocates supported the contract. And the reason we supported it was, number one, it, it was a renewable resource. Uh, number two, it provided jobs in the, on, on Hawaii Island. Uh, number three, uh, in spite of the, the additional cost, we felt that the benefits far outweighed the, those costs because it provided for the potential for firm, dispatchable power to HELCO customers. The difficulty that we have as consumer advocate is trying to determine you know, what is the community sentiment? Uh, in Kau, we know that there is a very vocal group who oppose the Ainakoa Pono project. Uh, same with Lanai. We know that there's a very vocal group of, of residents there who are against wind, the wind farm uh, and the undersea cable. But we also know that, on, especially on Lanai, there's a group of people who feel that that would be good for their economy. And same with Kau. The, the, potential to create jobs for the refinery and for to grow the feedstock. Uh, it, it's a huge potential for that community. We as the consumer advocate, we tend to be too caught up in uh, reviewing individual dockets. Uh, we don't do as good a job as we should be doing in reaching out to the consumer, educating the consumer, and that's something that, that's one of the goals that I have for our office. We're at the very beginning of studying LNG. Uh, it has the potential to be a game changer for, the, uh, for energy in Hawaii, uh, but it also has uh, huge costs associated with it. When you make that kind of financial commitment to a resource such as LNG, it tends to drag on a lot longer than the 10 to 15 years you were hoping that it would take you to bridge to renewable energy. And that's one of the concerns that we have. Is this going to be something, the next oil? Are we just replacing one fossil fuel for another fossil fuel? Jeff Kissel is the chief executive officer of Hawaii Gas, also known as the Gas Company, a proponent of liquefied natural gas in Hawaii, a plentiful and cleaner burning fossil fuel that will help Hawaii make its transition to clean energy. LNG, like all other new fuels, has to come into a market in a way that the public can accept and the infrastructure can handle. Today, if we were to build large-scale infrastructure to bring in LNG, we'd have a major undertaking, first of all, to do it safely, and secondly, to do it in a way that the public could understand and accept. Bringing it in at a small scale, the same way we do other gases, the same way they bring in hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen for the hospitals, propane for the community, is an easy way to bring it in and the safe handling characteristics can be emphasized. We can learn what this gas does, how it works. And the nice thing about it is that we can bring it in at a cost slightly lower than we're producing existing gas for so we don't require any taxpayer or ratepayer subsidy to get this done. Our company believes in renewable energy. We built our renewable gas plant at Campbell Industrial Park to supplement our SNG plant before we engaged in the LNG strategy. We think LNG coming to Hawaii will accelerate the renewable energy strategy for the state 
rather than hold it back or defer it. It's going to do it in two important ways. The first is it's going to lower the overall cost of energy in the state. A competing fuel should lower the cost of all of the other conventional fuels because that fuel's in the market and it's competing. When you lower the cost of fuel, you free up money for investment. This state is spending double the percentage of its gross domestic product today that it did 15 years ago on energy, taken as a whole. If we can get that percentage directionally moving back to an acceptable level, we free up a lot of money that can be used to invest in renewables. LNG will help everyone more than not just the ratepayer, not the people paying for gas or people paying for electricity. LNG will help everyone who is directly or indirectly consuming fuel. You know, you're consuming an awful lot of fuel every time you open the water tap and turn on your water because it takes a lot of energy to pump that water. You're consuming fuel when you drive your car. You're consuming fuel when you walk through an air-conditioned building. And gas, as a lower-cost competitive fuel, should lower the cost for everyone and allow us to invest in renewables. More importantly, the physical properties of gas, low carbon footprint, easy use, efficient use, allow you to supplement renewable energy with gas to firm up the variability that wind and solar have so that you can have more utilization of your renewables. Whatever you do, make sure to follow the action in clean energy as this important initiative unfolds and support it whenever and wherever you can. Remember, building clean energy for Hawaii requires us to build an entirely new infrastructure, and that requires our full attention. We'll meet a number of other energy heroes in the weeks to follow and see their profiles too. So if you want to know more about the people behind the state of clean energy in the state of Hawaii, stay tuned to ThinkTech on OC16. And stay tuned to ThinkTech Radio. Starting January 8th, ThinkTech Radio and the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum will present High Energy Tuesdays, exploring the state of clean energy in the state of Hawaii, on Tuesdays from 4 to 5 p.m. on KGU 760 AM. And if you'd like to get a handle on what will happen in energy during this coming session of the legislature, make sure to attend the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum's annual legislative briefing in the Capitol Auditorium on January 10th, featuring remarks and predictions by these and other energy heroes in Hawaii. See hawaiienergypolicy.hawaii.edu. The ninth Hi. annual legislative briefing. Wow, that's, that's right. fabulous. Isn't that so uh, and, that, and that's coming on January 10th Correct. Uh, in the morning. Um, right, at 10, at, at 10 o'clock in the morning uh, at the Capitol Auditorium. We have tried to be controversial and bring up issues that aren't being covered and challenge us to do better. What are the best technologies and the resources in renewable energy uh, for the good energy mix? So we'll have um, Hawaiian Electric, Rabi Am, and uh, KIUC, um, Brad Rockwell. And also, our chair of our commission, the Public Utilities Commission, tell us the process by which we can get to the Mina Morita. Mina Morita. But you know, the biggest sector that we've been neglecting is transportation. And so we are focusing on what we can do in transportation because it has been so neglected. The most important at the end of the session will be uh, Senator Ige, our chair of the Ways and Means. Can we balance the budget and still move forward? We will have also on the third floor lanai after the briefing, uh, pay setters, people in the energy sector, renewables, energy efficiency, the various organizations that work in energy. It's an intersection year as far as I can see. There are things we should have done which we haven't done. We're going to talk about that. There are issues that are sort of getting in the way. We have to get them out of the way. We have to deal with them. Energy Policy Forum is, is positioned at the exactly right place to do this and to uh, you know, make the public aware of these things, make the legislature aware of these things, and try to get sort of a new handle see how the industry has evolved, who's there, who's the, who are the players mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a moving target. And there are a number of new legislators this year, so we hope that they will attend and mix with not only the pace setters, the people in the industry and the associations, but also with the, the general public. The number one priority. This is, this is our economy. 
we want you all to be there because then you could meet the people in the field, you can get information. It's so important for everybody, the total community, to know from energy efficiency to renewable energy and meet your legislators. This will be a better infrastructure and will give us independence from increasing oil prices, but it will cost money. If we want this independence, we'll have to pay those costs. Clean energy is our highest priority, essential to maintaining our economy and our way of life. So this is money well spent. And now let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. ThinkTech's 4 to 5 p.m. drive time radio series on KGU 760 AM continues this week. Tune in to 760 AM for great shows every business week. Raise your awareness on tech, energy, Asia, and more on ThinkTech Radio. On January 24th, the Hawaii Venture Capital Association and ThinkTech will present the annual Entrepreneur of the Year and the Deal of the Year awards at a luncheon program at the Plaza Club. Sign up for these programs on hvca.org. And now here's Bill Spencer, President of the Hawaii Venture Capital Association, with this week's Spensation. Brian Schatz's appointment is going to change everything. What do you think? We really have an interesting opportunity to start building anew. Uh, we have two very young, energetic people in the Congress and in the Senate. Uh, we have some uh, well-respected and uh, important leaders who've also demonstrated their abilities. Uh, yet now it's time to rebuild and, and renew that uh, growth. It's going to be tough because obviously uh, how can you replace the kind of power that Dan Inouye had? Brian was tasked with identifying where federal monies could come from to help us with our various initiatives. <clears throat> so he's had two years to really develop the acumen and to learn the ropes. So he won't be going into the Capitol uh, completely wet behind the ears. I think he, uh, you know, he has some perspective. The whole seniority system makes it hard to, you know, uh, move, uh, move up the chain of command. And, and he'll have to make do with whatever appointments are doled out to him. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, a learning curve, a steep learning curve, but he's a bright guy. He's been a great lieutenant governor. He's, he, learning curve is right. Look what he did for energy. Look what he did for APEC. Uh, remarkable sophistication in these areas. Um, whatever tasks he's been assigned, he's handled really, really well. Uh, and I think he's He's very Akamai politically. He's handled himself politically in this environment as well as anybody has. Uh, so, you know, sometimes we think that we, we, we come from a, a small, unsophisticated place and we have trouble dealing in New York and Washington, but, you know, Brian is a national thinker. I think he'll be fine. I think he will, too. I, I think the, the challenge we face locally now is who's going to be our energy champion. I think that is something to be concerned about. Uh, he was taking the lead on that lo locally. Um, he was also a, a tech um, supporter. Uh, he understood the importance of tech to building the, and maintaining some balance in our economy. And uh, there will be uh, less that he can do from Washington in maintaining the momentum on that front. Uh, so I think there will be a bit of a, a vacuum in his 
uh, being out of state. His loss uh, locally um, is going to be hard to fill. And um, who knows how long it'll take to fill it properly. Um, who knows, uh, you know, how much trouble there be in finding the necessary talent. But that's the most exciting part of it, Bill. There are gaps now, the vacuums, as you said, and the filling of those vacuums is going to be an interesting time. We're in a new generation. His appointment signifies, he's 40 years old, uh, the new generation is emerging in Hawaii. This is a great time to be here. It's a great time to be alive in Hawaii. And um, so I think we all ought to be very optimistic that ultimately we'll fill the vacuum, ultimately we'll do better than ever. That's what I think. I think you're right. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> we'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Thanks to the Shidler Family Foundation, which supports a number of educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tech. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Miko on Maui and Helco on the Big Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company, and CEO of CBI Polymers, a tech company in Hawaii. The High Tech Development Corporation, the state's leading technology agency, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Castle and Cook, Hawaii with a time-honored legacy that spans more than 160 years and revolves around its mission of investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Hawaii Gas, also known as The Gas Company, a proponent of the liquefied natural gas initiative, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Okay, Duke, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Duke does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. You bet, Jay. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech on OC16, visit thinktechhawaii.com, be a sponsor or a volunteer, and help us reach Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. Thanks so much for joining us on Think Tech. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Duke Oishi. Aloha, everyone.